Hey guys, it's Alexander Williamson here with the secret history living in your aquarium. How are you guys doing? Tonight marks the three year anniversary of the channel. Well, it of it really existing. I've had a channel off and on for, I guess, since 2009 or 2008, uh, but I've deleted most of the old stuff because uh, it was personal home videos and random fish stuff sometimes uh but in any case it's been three years since we've been calling it a secret history living in your aquarium and uh i'm just excited that it's gone on this long that it's grown and that you folks have decided to join me uh in this little journey we call uh youtube and the internet Zen Ginger, hello, fake name, what's up, animal lover number one, hello, fish family. So, uh, for this episode, I was thinking that we could just go over any questions you guys have. I feel like usually I run around and I show off all my aquariums, and I have a video coming out where I'm going to show off some of the new fish that I got, and tonight we'll probably end up looking at some of the, the new critters as well, or doing the thing where uh, I just film critters, but I answer questions at the same time, just so you guys don't have to necessarily look just at me. Uh, I feel like a lot of fish YouTubers just have the, the, the video at them sitting at a desk, and I understand why when you have a lot of questions coming in. But, um, yeah, you know, uh, I also like channels like Lucas Brett's, uh, Rachel O'Leary's, where they kind of walk around and show things if people ask and it happens to be uh, an answer that they can readily get to and show an example of or something interesting is going on in the fish room, that sort of thing. So, uh, yeah, but uh, it's going well here in Ballard. Uh, Griffin Fish Room, hello. Aquatic Haven, Jim, hello. Uh, uh, Cindy, ah, yeah, so you're in the local area. If you are not in the local area, you don't know what a drenching we are getting. Uh, I was just looking up rainfall totals for the, uh, local area. In Seattle, it's been one to three inches, it looks like, today so far, depending what part of town you're in. Um, since we, our elevation, uh, changes as much as I think 850 feet or something like that um, but for the question is Ballard still above water uh, well parts of it uh, I was just driving around the old heart of Ballard old downtown Ballard and uh, there were cars going through this puddle that was stalling them like the like SUVs were not making it through a puddle luckily I had my truck uh, and I could see how deep the puddle was where, but people were just driving straight into it full speed and just kind of, you know, they'd hit the water and and then just slow down and kind of sink instead of hydroplane. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Pete down, down under says, uh, my MTS is bad. I need to get another tank for my plant collectoritis. Well, you know that I've got that problem, too. I mean, all my tanks are full of plants. Uh, yeah, I heard that, Cindy. We just broke the 10-year rain record uh, by noon today. Pretty crazy. Ballard, the land of Volkswagens uh, eating trolls. Yeah, that would be Fremont as well. Uh, but it all runs together. There's too many neighborhoods in Seattle. Uh, hold on. Let me grab something real quick. All right. We're back in the New York groove. So what's new with everybody? Um, do we have any questions going on? Anybody got fishy, fishy fish room questions that have been plaguing your mind? Any problems, things like that? Um, Cause I feel like I have been inadequately answering some of the questions during live streams and I feel like I've neglected you. Okay. Zen Ginger, I have two blue dreams with dark colored eggs. Do you know they should be dropping shrimplets soon, or are they always fairly dark? Just wondering if it's actually eyes I'm seeing, or just wishful thinking. Well, so, if you don't know how long that they have been, um, you know, pregnant, it's hard to say for sure. 
With Blue Dreams, I've seen every color, well, not every color, uh, but I've seen, you know, green, yellow, uh, a clearish opaque color, um, brown, and then almost like a black before. Generally, when you see the darker color, that means that the shrimp are getting near to hatching, um, and you'll, you'll see eyes on the little shrimp, as you mentioned, in their little egg sacs. Um, another way you can tell is if the mother is not moving her swimmerettes so much to fan them, if she's taking long breaks of like 30 seconds or something like that, that would be an indicator. And just the fact that she's not hiding under a rock right that second is another good indicator because when the females are first pregnant or like within a few days of giving birth, uh, on either side of those things, they hide pretty well and kind of bury themselves into like a rock crevice or substrate if they can. Um, so my guess is probably not going to have babies like tonight, but maybe you're on the closer end to having them within a week. Uh, you know, they're, they're never going to have eggs for more than five weeks. Uh, and just while we're talking about that, I haven't seen um, anything to explain why we get different egg colors. I think it may just be just as random as some other trait that you'd inherit. You know, just like humans have, you know, hair color and eye color and skin tone color. Uh, I think maybe the egg color might just be one of those things, you know, just like some chickens lay blue eggs and things like that, because I can't figure it out for the life of me, and I've been very curious. Uh, HC Aqua, Rio de Gao, hello. Uh, no, not Nola Jane, how's it going? Thank you so much for the card. I got a wonderful Christmas card from a couple of you, but from Nola Jane, uh, and I really uh, appreciate that. It warms my heart. Um you work with Kochu Blue Tetras. Um, I have had them before. I like them. And I know uh, that my buddy Bentley Pasco, who has his own channel, um, he's had a school. I think he bought maybe 100 or 80 of them. I think it was 80 of them. He bought 80 of them and put them in his planted, uh, one of his nursery tanks for growing out uh, plants to sell. Uh, in a, I think it's a 40 breeder, uh, but that's, they got big. And so now that's a lot of them in a dense tank, but boy, they're beautiful. If you have a tank with natural sunlight, whew, not much gets more beautiful than that blue, that sparkling, uh, glistening blue that they get is, is really something else. They get a little bit bigger than a lot of the tetras that I tend to like. I like ember tetras and reed tetras and, uh, rummy nose tetras are another favorite of mine, um, or kitty tetras, neon blue cardinal tetras. Kochu tetras can get, you know, uh, yay big probably, and uh, maybe three inches or so. And so uh, that that part of things is uh, they take up more space. Let me say that they take up more space when you get them at an inch long and they triple in size and and like six times in weight and you know they they grow as you have them so just be prepared for that but they're a cool fish uh they breed just like any other tetra uh they do like low um ph water so that's high acidity if you're going to breed them and they do like darker light or, or black water tank if you have something set up like that all right uh, Rizzle uh, Muta Queen. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Um, my cherry shrimp are thriving in my 60 gallon tank with 10 pygmy quarries, 5 autosynclus. What fish should I add to control the shrimp population? Well, if, if, if they're good quality cherry shrimp, uh, you can just send them to me. I'll take them. I'm sure half the people in this in this room will take them. But uh, in reality, I mean, it depends on what fish you want to keep. Most fish, uh, even those quarries, will be eating some of the babies. Now, if you want something to really eat the babies, you could get something like... Um, I just did an episode on a wood cat, but wood cats are Cynodonus catfish. Those are big-time predator hunter 
uh, at night and uh, they will eat all sorts of little fish and shrimp. That's what they do. Uh, barbs, even like cherry barbs uh, or albino cherry barbs look pretty cool. Uh, Denisone barbs, um, uh, rainbow sharks, you know, all sorts of different. Uh, you got lots of choices. Um, the harder question would be which, which fish could you put in that tank that wouldn't eat those shrimp? Um, but yeah, seriously, if they're good quality shrimp, I would look at selling them or at least taking them to a local store, get a buck a piece. They'll sell them for four ninety nine a piece or something like that. Um, yeah, uh, I'm thinking of getting a Fluval Flex, but I want to keep Nano Fish and Neo Caradina. Can that work? Oh, totally, yeah. Um, the only thing I would say is maybe get a sponge aftermarket uh, intake filter cover. I can't remember on the Fluval Flex what um, what size that intake is or what screen it has on it, but I, I seem to think that it might suck up baby shrimp, but I'm not sure. So what I would do is I would check out one of my episodes called, um, or also Lucas Bretz has a good one, on uh, making a rock hideaway or a shrimp cave for your shrimp, for baby shrimp. And uh, that will really uh, encourage the survivability when you build a little pile of rocks and the baby shrimp can hang out in there. Also things like round pelia, so wasser tang, uh, java, um, java moss, java ferns, um, Valcinaria, if you're growing out a larger area, but um, you know, just small leafed, uh, fine, fine, uh, fine leafed plants, uh, hornwort, guppy grass, those kind of things. Um, all that stuff works really well uh, to, to house the baby shrimp as well as baby fish. I mean, you could do something interesting. I want to show you guys something. See, I told you I was going to break my promise of, of sitting in one spot, but. I just like these guys way too much not to show them off. So up here, we've got my new half beaks. So these guys are, um, they're not quite full grown. Well, this one actually is. But then we've got other ones here. But my other half beak is full grown. And then the younger ladies are right here. And they're actually a live bearer. So the males, uh, they stay really skinny, which keeps a really low bio load. And then, uh, you know, they, they have these cool colored tails that get big and bright when they're active and fighting. <laughs> they fight with that big nose. So the males have that long nose and they hook that nose around the other male's nose and then they push off of them. These are two males. They push off of them. Actually, that's a female and a male. Uh, they push off each other and kind of roll. They do this barrel roll to, to check who's the strongest. But you can see that the females have a really weird shaped body that's kind of sunken in um, when they're not pregnant, when they're not bearing young because they can carry quite a bit of you know, they have to carry the babies in them that are fully developed. So they're a really fun fish that I recommend. Um, you could probably keep them in a 20 long. I mean, maybe a 15 you could keep them in. It's more about surface area. But honestly, these guys have only been using this half of my 20 long. So you could probably get away with like three or four in a, in a tank uh, like this, you know, with something some floating plants and then some hornwort here uh and some shrimp you know they're not going to probably eat the shrimp because their mouth is just not shaped for that as well um but i don't know i just think they're a fun fish there's three or four species of them that you can get in the hobby i think they're overlooked a lot these are the gold uh wrestling half beaks they're also the um celebs or celebes half beaks are available too um, also, you've got the little baddest. They're, they're real good at eating shrimp, but again, they're a great fish for uh, a nano tank, not for a shrimp tank necessarily, but I have kept them together if I've got a really well-established colony. And obviously, I'm keeping guppies 
a badass uh, harem, and which is four females and a male, uh, or some combination thereof. I usually try to keep you know three or four males to a, a f or three or four females to a male. Uh, thanks, uh, Nola Jane, for telling everyone to smash that thumbs up. I do appreciate that. Um, all right, let's see here. Aquatic Haven says. Alex, I'm having trouble with my 20 long. Uh, this is a guppy only tank and my water parameters are fine. I've been observing them daily and I'm losing one every few days. Thoughts on the loss? Uh, yeah, my guess would be Columnaris. Um, look really closely and see if any have. I've been fighting this problem off and on too. Um, and really the answer is to get them out of there if you see one with it. But um, what you'll see is usually they'll be sunken looking. Like this little guy here has got something going on. And I think it's worms actually or some sort of parasite. You see that where it's going to the bathroom has a white film. So I'm going to need to treat this whole tank actually with, um, with something like Levamisol or... Um, uh, uh, f f flubendazole, something like that. Um, but yeah, and you can see some of them have just eaten way too much, and it's because I put cucumber in all the tanks and for the pleco babies, uh, which I've moved down here. If you guys were wondering, uh, these are those. Uh, these are the lemon and citrus babies are now down here because this tank has lots of algae for them to eat. There's a reason why I don't scrape the algae off of all the other parts of my tanks, and it's because these little guys, they just absolutely love it. So, um, just got a five-gallon nano cube. Do you have any advice on what to put in it uh, that would be very active? Yeah, so um, let's take a look over in my, my most nano-friendly tank. So, in here... I would highly, highly recommend not chili rasboras, but phoenix rasboras. These guys are awesome. They're, uh, they're colorful. They're, uh, hold on, let's see if we can get the contrast and the reflections down a little bit. Because that's the problem with the live stream is it, it really washes out the color. But these little guys are great. Uh, in a in a five gallon, you could seriously have fifteen of them. They're they're these are full grown, and you can see they're not even the size of my pinky nail. They're one of the smallest fish in the hobby. There's another one called um, Danielellas. They don't have much color to them, but they stay really small. Uh, these guys, Samfongzi Resboras, if you can find them, they're definitely for sale at the Wet Spot online. Wet Spot Tropical Fish. Uh, but the Samfongzi Razbor is very active. They're not scared of your fingers. In fact, they come to it. They were near extinction or believed to be extinct. And they found three in a German batch of uh, Kubota Razboras and Lamb Chop Razboras. And somebody said, hey, those aren't baby uh, ra uh, Lamb Chop Razboras. Those are uh, Samfongzi Razboras from the 70s. And with the three, they were able to breed back. Uh, it was two females and a male, luckily. And they were able to breed those back. So that's another really great option. Um, more options, uh, these tin Winnie Danios. I wouldn't put more than five in a five-gallon tank. I mean, you can still get something like an Auto Sinkless um, and a couple of these guys. If it's planted, if it's well planted, um, you don't need to worry uh, nearly as much as a lot of people would have you think. Uh, if, if you get a planted tank, it means the world for what you can put in there um, as far as bio load. Now in here we also have, let's see if we can get a better shot of them, maybe sneak up on them. Um, we also have uh, Auto Sinkless. Um, I, I recommend the Orange Auto Sinkless which its Latin name is Robocop. I'm not joking. It is Robocop, spelled just like Robocop the movie. Um, and that's, that'll stay smaller. It's a little more triangular and funky shaped. Some people think it's cuter. Some people think it's just a weird uh, critter. But that's a great nano fish. Um, all of the micro rasboras are going to be great. So you're going to have, um, in that category, you will have... Uh, the Sun Danio uh, axle rod, so either blue or green rasboras. 
the Kubatai or Kubota, however you want to say it, um, Rasboras, which are little green, uh, little neon green fish. They're one of the true green fish out there. I'm waiting right now for the CPDs. Uh, that's Celestial Pearl Danios, or uh, they are also known as Galaxy Rasboras, even though they're a Danio. Uh, and then the Erythromicron uh, fish are also another one. Those two will stay very small, but they really do hide a lot, I, I must say. Um, but any of these really teeny fish, um, like the Micro Rasboras or Nano Rasboras, whatever you want to call them, uh, people call them interchangeably so back there right there there's an erythromicron baby um and i bought them from aquatic arts i bought uh 24 of them as babies uh but they grow to be about the size of these fish here uh, of the somfongsi reservoirs except they're a little skinnier and a lot um wider in height i guess in in there they they're shaped more uh they get so scared even with me uh, moving the camera. But if you can see them back there, there's one right there. They get these beautiful stripes. They get orange on them, orange fins, red fins with a dot on the tail. And then they get these distinguished stripes. Um, but if, if you know this tank, it's a 17-gallon tank that needs to get re-aquascaped. But I've got... Uh, 25, 24 baby or young ones I added, plus these adults. There you go. There's a better view of what those look like. So those are erythromicrons, um, and I like those a lot. They're called emerald dwarf rasboras. So I would go with, uh, I mean, you could go with five of those and ten of these guys if you like the schooling action. I think that would be fine in a 15, and then however many shrimp you want. Um, shrimp, you, there's always room for shrimp, uh, whatever shrimp you feel like grabbing. These Malawa shrimp uh, and the Gold Nebula shrimp are two Caradina species that are just tough as nails, and uh, I can't get them to... I mean, I, I, I should have something that eats them better in here. Um, but they reproduce at a crazy rate, um, and the babies are all over and they get eaten by these guppies in here because guppies they're not my favorite nano fish um some of the endlers like a silverado endler or something like that that makes a great uh little nano fish for like a 15 gallon or a 10 gallon you can get the males but once you get the males and females it's just not a good situation unless you have extra tanks uh these tin winnies actually that's another good fish right back there that striped one that ran up into view, that is a multi-striped border loach, also known as a dwarf multi-bar loach. Um, they're just kind of a fun little loach. They don't get bigger than that. They get about an inch and a half long, uh, and they are very peaceful. They don't even eat my shrimp. They eat more like algae and um, uh, biofilm, stuff like that. All right, let's see here. How prolific are the half beaks? Well, we'll see. I don't know. I haven't kept them in a long time. There you go. There's that multi bar. Um, yeah, we'll see. I want to know. I'm, I'm sure with the guppies, that's going to stress them out. So I kind of want to get the guppies out of there and find out. Um, yeah. All right. Aquatic Haven. Yes, I see white poop. It's a planted tank. Do I need to move the fish or the plants? Um, I would treat the tank with an anti-parasitic uh if it's just a 20 gallon probably just treat everything and uh hope for the best because uh parasites yes they come in on plants yes they come in on fish they come in in the air and just off of us you know from touching little uh nematodes and things that uh we pick up in the day or if it's raining you know there's little critters like tardigrades and little worms uh, you know that are out there in the ether that is everyday life and uh yeah i think just uh treat it with as as directed with uh either flubendazole or um you know anti uh, parasite 
treatment by API. I think those are good. Um, if it's columnaris, though, I don't know. If it has those white patches rather than just the white poop, if it has white patches where you can see that it's, um, it's biofilm and its slime coat have been compromised, um, that is sometimes a sign of what I was saying, columnaris. And you can Google pictures of that col columnaris and uh, see if that fits the bill better than parasites. But I usually use uh, fenbendazole, flubendazole, or levamisol. They're all very similar. It's kind of potato potato. It's like saying, uh, oh, I only drink Budweiser. I, I drink uh, bush beer or whatever, you know, or paps. Yeah, there's a slight difference, but it's, it's, they do the same thing. I'm looking for a tight schooling blue nanofish. I like the blue axelrod resborus, but I hear they are difficult to keep and they're expensive. Um, Jim, you know what? They're actually not that difficult nor that expensive. Um, whoever talked to you lied. No, um, the thing that's a little more difficult, I don't know where you live, but they do like a lower TDS. Like a TDS under 150 would be best. Granted, I've kept them way over that. I've kept them at like 350 before. Um, but you don't want that to be hard water like limestone. There's definitely different makeups of, of total dissolved solids. And uh, sometimes it's like clay and silt and things like that. And other times it's, you know, straight calcium and carbon, which is uh, less desirable for those little fish. But I think I've got some sun Daniels. Where are they? Are they still in here? Because I've also got, I also highly recommend uh, Ruby Tetras. This is as big as they get. These guys are three years old. Um, and they're an awesome little nano slash micro fish. When their color turns uh, pink instead of red, you know that your water quality has taken a dive. That's why I like them. But you have a, like two weeks notice before anybody dies. So I really like those guys because they've always given me a good heads up when things are not going right in the tank. Um, let's move some things around. Where are you, Sun Daniels? My problem is that these uh, endlers just assert themselves over the the other nano fish so heavily. Um, Sun Daniels, though, if if you have RO water or if you have a small tank. And you can maybe uh, top off the evaporation with just a jug of distilled water. That can also help you keep up with making the TDS not go th through the roof in its, in its levels. Um, my guys are a little scared. They're a little bit of scaredy pants um, right now because of the light being turned on. Uh, and they are, as much as I love the blue sun danios and uh, axelrod, axelrod eye blue sun danio or green sun danio, uh, they do get shy. Um, yeah, where are they? I don't even see any out right now. I did just turn the light on in the fish room, though. I might have a couple left in here, too, but I'm pretty positive I moved them all. They do hang out towards the back here, so we'll we'll wait a few minutes and see if we see see anybody zip by. But yeah, I like these Samfongzi Resbors a lot. It's not picking up their color on the live stream, but they have a beautiful like amber kind of color with like an opalesque sparkle, and then just this beautiful um, gasoline shimmer to them, which is great. But the Sun Daniels, they're, they're about the same size as the Chili guys. And if you go to uh, the Wet Spot, I think it is, the Wet Spot Tropical Fish, I think they're $4.99 each there. So, I mean, that's not super cheap, but you could get, you know, 35 bucks. You could get, you know, seven of them or 40 bucks, eight of them for that, something like that. Uh, if you sign up for their newsletter, I'm not... Uh, affiliated with them in any way but if you sign up for their newsletter uh, at least a few months ago they had a deal where they would give you free shipping on your first order so if you haven't ordered from the wet spot they have just like super rare fish and cichlids um, from all over the world uh, let's you know what let's, uh, let's scoot this back 
You guys ready to see a shrimp cavalcade? We'll chase some fish and shrimp out here. Here's here's some erythromicrons for you. This is when they're colored up because I'm scaring them. But let's move around some some of these mossy algae laden things and then watch this watch all the shrimp we'll have coming through here come on shrimp so yeah we've got look at all these shrimp just cruising through and then we've got some panda loaches still in here with the panda gars this is a 17 gallon tank and I know everybody thinks I'm crazy for keeping so many fish in here, but the nitrates are zero. So I've got, with the CPDs and erythromicron, 35 fish alone. Then I've got a school of 12 of these, uh, these little um, uh, Phoenix Rasboras, uh, which are the same as Chili, Brigitte, Strawberry, they're all the same size. I just think the Phoenix have the best bright color and an interesting pattern on them. And they turn more subtle. Like, they, they'll go to burgundy and then they'll go to, like, neon orange pink. Like, the kind that you'd see on, like, 1990s fanny packs. Um, and then I've got six of the um, Tin Winnie, which are also known as Gold Ring uh, Danios. And then I've got two... Uh, multi-stripe border loaches, uh, two pandagaras, two panda loaches, a couple of them, a man and a woman loach, uh, and the rest are all in their own little enclosure down on the floor that you guys probably have seen. And then I have the guppies in here. Um, so yeah, there are, by the inch per gallon rule, this 17 gallon is, there's like 60 fish in here. Um, but with this much uh, planting and water changes and all that, uh, and I just have been trimming and trimming and stealing and putting stuff upstairs in the new 50-gallon uh, aquascape. But look at all these shrimp that just come running out of the cracks when I stir things up. There's just... I don't know. I tried to count them one day uh, by putting some, some food out after not feeding them for a long time. And, like, seriously, 10% of them are probably pregnant at a given time, too. Uh, but these Malawa and and uh, and also the... I like the Malawa a lot. They're uh, Parparapodentis caridina is what their official name is. Uh, I've got a species profile on them, but I've also had just weirdness in their colors. They have had them turn lots of crazy colors, um, which is interesting. Uh, also, I started mixing these guppies with wild guppies, um, or endlers, I should say. Um, the Tom Bar, uh, I don't remember what they call them, but they have a special name, uh, and I can't remember what it is. It's just a K-class endler of some sort. Um, all right, well, let's look at this tank for a little bit, too. Got the pandagars eating cucumber or zucchini right now. Um, we got my uh, my baby betta. He's pretty chill. The female uh, betta is in the tank as well, but she hides on the other side. He doesn't seem to be interested in making a nest. Sometimes when I have him living in a colony... They're totally on the ball with, uh, you know, wanting to reproduce. But another thing is I put one pregnant Malawa shrimp in this tank. And now I have, let's see if we can see them from above. Now I have an infestation. And even with all my, uh, there, this, this is my Danio tank, right guys? So let's try to scare them out of of over here we'll try to move them out move them up ride them out move them up move them in. uh but this is my larger tetra tank as well as my rare daniel and loach 
tank and uh, also it has plecos in it. And yet these shrimp are freaking everywhere even when they get eaten. So it's, it, it really encourages them to, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, and see the plecos there eaten away at the zucchini. Snails are too. But look at these green dragon babies eating. Um yeah, there's that multi-bar border loach again. I like these guys a lot. They're really peaceful. Really chill. They get scared easily, but but they're pretty chill. Um, whereas the Danios, not chill. They will eat your shrimp like there is no tomorrow, and the eating shrimp is a contest. Not just a hobby, but a contest. Um, <clears throat> all right, so let's see here. Uh, Mr. B, hello, how's it going? Uh, fish tubers, what's going on? Oh, we got we got a good amount of people in here. Could we get a like spike? If if I count to, to five, do you think you guys could humor me and, and click the like button if I've earned it? If I haven't, then don't don't bother. Like you kind of have to minimize the chat and then click the like button. Uh, and I know that's really hard to do. Uh, it's just overwhelming. But uh, let's count it off at four, five, three, two, and one. Let's see if we can get a spike in likes. I think it failed. Oh, no, it's starting to go up. All right, Joe Black, hello. Alex, what would you think the lowest temperature to keep Cardinal Tetras? Uh, I want to put them in my plant tank, but the temp is 72 to 75. Uh, I've seen it done. It, it's doable. 72 to me in my mind is too cold for them to to uh prosper and to reproduce and to me that's a good measure of if you're if uh not every fish like guppies for instance but if your fish reproduces at a certain temperature or ph then you probably know that you're doing it it's comfortable enough to decide yes it's worth it there is a future for our kind and to make babies um, whereas, you know, you can get away with other things, but fish don't live as long, things like that. Hey, baby Luminatus, uh, where did you come from? I've got a pair of, uh, Pseudomagill Luminatus in there, uh, in this tank still. And they're so fast and so, uh, you know, they're so fast that I, I've only seen the male and I didn't think there was a female in here anymore. Uh, there's the male right now, speaking of, but we've got a baby in there. It looks to be a male. Um, but yeah, so, uh, let's see here. Uh, the Cardinal Tetris, if you can keep it like above 74, I think that would be perfect. Like, honestly, that's, uh, they can take 72 for a, about three months and that's fine. That, that is like their cool season. It's the, and if they go down deep into a river, they're going to get hit, you know, 65 even. But, um, they don't thrive in that. They they act slower and their metabolism slower. Um, yeah, can a half beat go in a five gallon? You know they get about two inches long, but you saw how skinny they are. So I would say in a five gallon, you could definitely breed them in there if it was like just shrimp and half be beaks. Um, you could probably do it. You could probably put three in there, and then they're live bears, and so they have like you know, one to five babies at a time or something like that, or one to three. Um, you could do that. Um, I, another question that somebody else said um, is uh, Richard Green. Uh, I have a species of only clown killy tank, and I've seen some fry, but they aren't surviving. Do you think I'm getting enough food to them, or are their parents eating them? Their parents are eating them. They're savages. Um, yeah, clown killies are notorious for that. I'm really happy that you've seen Fry. Um, if you haven't been feeding them, I've got some clown killies in here somewhere. Look at these shrimp. What are they? What? What do you want from me, shrimps? It's like they come to me. I don't think shrimp are that smart, but maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, clown killies are another great fish. You could put them with half breaks. Or half beaks, sorry, half breaks. I'm thinking of shotguns or something. Um, where is my clown killie? He's in, or I have two in here. These uh, lily pads and duckweed and all the junk is getting in the way. Um, 
But yeah, you could. Uh, I think you could. And CO2 trick, huh? We got a question about the good old CO2. Um, one tip I'll tell you about CO2 injection for plants. Um, start it a half an hour. Hey, these shrimp are mating. Great, because I need more. Um, start it a half an hour before the lights come on and cut it off a half an hour before they go off. Um, they can't do anything with CO2 at night anyways. Um, they're going to be using, they're only going to be using uh, nutrients from the roots at night, not from the water. That process shuts down while, when photosynthesis shuts down for the day, so do the other processes from the water. And they release their CO2 while their roots uh, take up the uh, energy and nutrients. And so I would say that um, my favorite thing to do is actually short uh, windows. So under eight hours or under a very intense light. Because, you know, your CO2 injection only goes as far as your light and the carbon for it to build off of. And so your, your carbon is in the CO2, so you're good there. But then it also has to have carbon in the, the soil a bit, and then it's got to have nitrogen, potassium, um, phosphates, things like that that um, also regulate things. So if, if you have a question, uh, Lolo, L-O-L-O, period, O, uh, if you have questions, uh, please check out my, um, it's a video I made probably a month or two ago, and it's all about um, stopping algae, but I describe quite a bit about how plants and CO2 work, and I compare them to a construction site. And so even though it's about algae, it really goes into depth about how plants use CO2 and what the other fertilizers and chemicals do. So check out the uh, algae uh, video. If you just look back in the timeline, it, it's... It's back there, but it's not one of the really far back. I've done several videos on different types of algae, but this one was on green algae and uh, metaphors for it. Um, but yeah, um, so on that clown killie tank, if I were you, I would get some vinegar eels um, also. Vinegar eels are more likely to stay towards the top of the tank. Uh, vinegar eels have to breathe air every once in a while, and even though they'll only live 24 hours in normal water without the acidity of the vinegar, um, they'll come to the top to gasp for air, and they'll squiggle around at the top. And those clown killy babies, or rocket killy babies, depending on what you're used to calling them wherever you live, um, they're actually, uh, you know, they're going to... You should try to give them plenty of places to hide. Like red root floaters are awesome. Water lettuce is awesome. Give them lots of places to hide the fry. And if you can give them a bigger tank than it seems like they need. What are these shrimp doing? Um, that helps too because then they can, uh, can kind of just rock it around and avoid the parents. Uh, or if you have a pen, when you see a flush of babies, um, do, you know, put them, put the parents in the pen. Get get one of the floating pens. I did a ten gifts for Christmas video recently of great things I use all the time. This with an active air filter in it and an active overflow so that it stays warm. That would be a great thing to hang off for your clown rocket killies. Um, Oh, I just saw Blue Sun Daniel cruise by. He's back there with the the Tetras. The Teteras. Um, but yeah, another thing you can do if you're just really fed up with not getting babies is go and get um, knitting mesh for like, uh, or I guess it, it's what, needlepoint? The biggest size though for like yarn for, for like, blind people who needlepoint and just all I did was a lot of these boxes that are those clear ones they have a little nubbin uh from where the, the mold 
from where the cast is uh, made of the shape, and then you, they snip it off, and there's actually this nubbin, and so I cut it to size, and since the parents can get through that, and the babies just go right up to the parents, if you put this through, more eggs will fall through this. So this is my Tetra, uh, my Killy or Rocket, uh, Clown Rocket Killy breeding apparatus. And then, you know, I have one that fits the size, but this would sit, you know, down here. And then I would just let the parents hang out in there in dim light. They like dim light, especially the R Rocket Killies. Um, or clown killies, uh, they're, they're from rivers and ponds in Central and West Africa, specifically uh, Liberia, and they, they live in little puddles that dry out really quickly, but a lot of them are deep in the jungle um, or on the border of the city in the ditches and things that are shaded. Uh, I don't know why all these guys are just chilling, staring blankly into the corner. They are. Um, but yeah, let me look a couple more questions. Um, do, 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 Are people getting these blue Axelridae to breed? Mine haven't yet. You know, I've gotten them to breed using the system I just showed you uh, with these things. But the trick for me was I had to feed them baby brine shrimp and then the their eggs needed Artema, like um, the smallest like green water. So, like, what I did was I took, um, over the summer was the only time I was able to do it, but I took jars of, I put a 20-gallon, or a 20-gallon long tank outside, and I just let it get algae by sitting in the sun and loading it up with nitrates, and it grew just a thick green water, like foggy, you couldn't even see a couple inches into it, and I would put the babies in the tank that was, like, that had like 30% of that green water in it and they would eat that. Now don't indoctrinate your um, medium to high light tanks with that green water or you can turn your whole tank into that and then you'll have to do a light lights out flush because that's different than like normal algae. That's like a plankton, you know? Um, so it, it's actually all over in there. Uh, oh, cool. You ordered a uh, Pseudomagill uh, cyanodorsalis, huh? Cyanodorsalis. But I, ra I raised those once. Um, I think they like a little bit of salt in their water, if I recall. But don't quote me on that. I can't remember. I've, ra I've bred about nine Pseudomagill species, and I think there's about 12. So... Um, can you show a picture of shrimp through the stages of pregnancy to tell it how many weeks? Uh, Al uh, Alexandra uh, Resnick, I have a, uh, a episode exactly on that saying, when will my shrimps uh, have babies or when will my shrimp lay eggs? Um, and it shows all of that. Right here, again, like I said, what are they doing? They're planning something. I just know it. I know that they're planning something evil. They're just hanging out in the open where the fish could pick them off, but they're like in a group the size of like some freaking West Side Story or James Dean, like we're going to rumble type thing. Um, Mr. B, okay, blah, blah, blah. How long are the average red tiger lowest bulbs produce a plant? Uh, the one I've had over in this other tank uh, in that you guys saw over here, this guy's been blooming for a year and a half. Now, a lot of times they'll uh, send out a daughter plant and that what's that will be what's actually blooming. So it'll send out runners and then grow up again. Or it will die back completely. Sometimes it will uh, lose everything, turn into a ball, float to the top, sink again, you have to bury it, and then it'll sprout again. Um, but sometimes they just do die. But if you have aqua soil... And a healthy ecosystem with good bacteria and everything and um, little shrimp and stuff to clean it and everything. Uh, they, they, you can keep them going a while. Um, it's too cold. 72 in my tank. I put a heater. Wait, I see a super chat. Where did I did I miss it? I'm gonna have to skip through things for a minute here. If I didn't get to your question, 
let me know. Um, okay, Aqua Haven. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the super chat. That means a lot. Ginger Grave popped in too. I don't know how far behind I am on the chat now, but and Cichlids twenty three. We got lots of awesome people in here. HC Aqua, obviously. Cody Sun. Joe Coffee. Uh, Coffee, my morning Joe. Good evening. Hello. Uh, Richard Green, another $5 super chat. Thank you so much. Always helps around Christmas time and helps out with the fact that I spent, you know, $200 at uh, Aquatic Arts on uh, rare catfish that you will never see. No. Uh, let's see if we can see some of them. Those Milky Way catfish under here. No. Wait, is there one under there with her? No. Um, well, we've got panda cat. Corys, they're pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. Look at the size of this uh, cold cherry shrimp. It's just massive. This guy is, or gal, I'm sure it's a gal, is huge. Look at her. So wait for something else to swim by. We'll put her next to a guppy. She is bigger than the Endlers. That's how she survived, I guess. The weird part is I don't have any red shrimp varieties, and I haven't for, like, a year now. So where did she come from? Or did she revert as a blue or, you know, yellow or something? Very odd, but she is my huge lady of the tank. Um, we've got this big old yellow lady, too. She's looking good. Uh, my yellow colony and my Babalti colony fell apart, so I put them in here. Everybody's getting mixed up. What are you doing? Um, I'm sure the catfish, the new catfish, are under here with all the mulm and gross stuff that I'm always wanting to clear out, but that's exactly where catfish and shrimp want to be, is in the grossness. Um, yeah, let's see if we can move any out. Um... Uh, well, if anything, you guys saw the video of them. Also, the mustard synodonis uh, that I have, I really am excited. Or mustard, um, see, I can't even move this net without catching a freaking shrimp. Uh, the uh, Oh, and it just came to me, whoever asked about little bluefish um, for their tank, the neon green tetra is a better one than the neon blue tetra. It has less red. And also, you could get a small blue endler, you know, something like this, and just males. And also, you could get the purple or blue tetra. It's called that sometimes, um, and it is a true tetra. But uh, I just had to get the Latin name for someone the other day. The wet spot has it listed as the purple tetra. But it is a powder cornflower blue, uh, and that's a pretty cool uh, fish. Um, man, I don't, I don't know. Uh, half beaks again? Yeah, they're my new obsession right now. I want to get, so I've got the wrestling ones and I've got the gold ones, but I do, which are actually, um, interchangeable. Now the slebs or celebes, um, they are from across the open water from these guys. And so they are not compatible for breeding, but, um, this male that I've had now for six months or so from Aquatic Arts, I have to put them in this tank with six inches of clearance because if they have a running start of this much water, they can leap over that. And that's exactly what happened when the two males were uh, fighting as they do, which they only do, I guess, usually at the beginning of uh, meeting each other if they're new to one another. Or if one overtakes the alpha male of the tank in size, they will do that. Um, but they don't do that the rest of the time. The females have this like blue, uh, gunmetal blue uh, color to them. And then they've got a pink little anal fin light on it, which is kind of cool. There's another baddest up there. Um, let's see here. I'll get back to the questions. Answer the question, Claire. Anybody know what that comes from? Uh, while we look at this dirty tank. Yeah, dirty tank. So we got baby baddest growing in here. I think there are about eight this time. 
not the best haul, but um, they take forever to grow. They're very similar to the Sun Daniels in that they take just a long time to grow. They take three or four months to get, you know, a quarter of an inch. And then from there, they grow pretty quickly again. Um, all right. Cody Sun watching 39 likes. See, I only see 35. And we got 60 people watching. If you could hit that like button, I would appreciate it, you guys. Um, let's see here. Going for... Uh, how do you get rid of bladder wart? With your hands. Um, I don't know the best... You know, I, I, I should look up more ways. I'm sure there's some trick to kill it. Uh, I know Seachem um, Flourish XL kills, like, Valsanera. Oh, hey, guys. We got the Battis are out. They're saying hello. So these guys are over a month old now. They're so small that I have to leave this tank super dirty like you see it with all the mulm and planaria and overfeeding. And it's not, it's not that I'm a bad fish keeper. Well, maybe I am, but that's beside the point. Um, it's so that these little fish, same with the sun, Daniel, it's so that those little white dots on the rocks, that's what it's eating. Even when I give it vinegar eels or daphnia or um, baby brine shrimp to eat, it's not interested. It's too small. This guy's too small. See what he's eating? See if he'll take a nibble of something. You see those little white dots that just float by? Those are, when I look under the microscope, those are little creatures. So your tank is full of these things, and usually your fish just eat them, your littler fish um, or shrimp or whatnot. Um, I don't have any Ula shrimp. Uh, I wanted to get some Ula shrimp when I was in Hawaii, actually. Uh, I had a friend, I visited a friend who had some, and I thought they were pretty nifty. Um, they need very specific conditions, though. And this guy, you can tell, is getting enough food because he's got pink in his belly, and it's kind of swollen, um, which is great. So, um, e even though I've been putting baby brine shrimp in here, um, de-shelled, obviously, uh, it looks like he's doing fine. He's out hunting. And you can see that little white dot moving around out there so he's also going to eat things like little planaria eggs uh little um uh hydra and seed shrimp things like that that is what he is looking for see he must have just eaten something in there uh he's chewing it up so but it'll be another month or two before this guy's ready to go in with any adults because as i said he's really small like he's not even a quarter inch oh he's very small so there's eight of those in here and those are the um scarlet baddis uh <laughs> Oh, you got some orange flash and triple red epistogramme, Richard Green. That is awesome. I almost bought those two. Um, I still haven't picked out which pair of um, which pair of cichlids I will be raising in my big tank upstairs. Um, it's either going to be rams, probably, or epistos. I would guess. Unless I get rid of the angels, put them in another tank for now, like a forty breeder, one of the ones I have. Um, and got something like, um, you know, something really big, like, uh, green terrors or something just like out of this world, like that I wouldn't normally have. Um, if I had a basement with a bunch of room for tanks, I would definitely have an Oscar or, you know, whatever, green terrors, whatever. So just now, uh, this week, we've had a lot of baby Blue Dreams born in here, which is great because I felt like the adults had been dying for a while. And what did I do? Nothing. I just, I didn't do any water changes. I've let the water evaporate. Um, and all of a sudden, you can see there's these little babies all over the place um, from several different uh, batches. Clearly, they're very different sizes and different tones of blue. Uh, and we've got some more pregnant mothers down here. The panda loaches never eat the babies, which is really interesting to me. They just have no interest in the babies. 
And then we've got some babies right here on the glass. Focus on them with the water spots. Um, yeah, and then we've got another pregnant one right over there. So uh, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Aquatic Adventures with Alex. That sounds like me. That fish that's your profile picture is beautiful, uh, Alex, there. Um, Joe Cuffey. Oh, Breakfast Club. Wow, okay, so I'm way behind. Let me just get caught up with y'all. I am I'm being a bad person. Can endlers be kept room temp 60 to 74? They can. Wild endlers can. But I wouldn't do it for too long, honestly. I, I would keep them closer to 68. 68's where they're more comfortable. By the way, this is mulm. This is all just gross mulm and trimmings from other tanks. And I'm doing an experiment to see if the Battis or Sundan... Actually, that's where I put the Sundanios. They're all in there. Never mind. They're in there at the Blue Shrimp. Uh, and this tank is just... Uh, just mom that's what it is i feed it but it's mom and it's uh i'm gonna see if it will start producing enough of the little tiny critters to actually um satiate the babies um let's go upstairs real quick my wife just stopped watching whatever movie it was that she was watching so so i can we can spy on the big tank. I've kept uh, I've kept the um, any live bear pretty much. I've kept outside in the Pacific Northwest. Hold on, I'm setting down my laptop. <coughs> so here we've got this tank is getting even fuller. We've got um, Ludwigia ovalis, super red. We've got Ludwigia star, and then uh, Pinnatophyta, and then also a red melon sword plant. We've got a ton of the Ember Tetris. <sighs> Sorry, guys, I have asthma today. <clears throat> and, um, oh, wow, they're stripping that cucumber in no time. So is the algae eater. Note to self, uh, algae eaters will eat everything but algae if you put it in front of them. I'm going to take you guys around the corner, see if you can see any catfish. Tell me. No. Well, that one doesn't count. I was trying to show you the new... African catfish. I did get the, a good portion of them filmed uh, when I put them in the tank. So you'll see them again, but they're nocturnal. That's the thing. Don't get wood cats if you're not willing to wait for the night. Wait, I can get you guys in there. You can see one. See it? Oh, and go into the darkness. That was the mustard wood cat. Dun, dun, dun. See if we can chase it out again. They're really beautiful, these mustard wood cats. I really like them. But they're even more shy than the Tatia mosaica or the Tatia ninjansis that I've had. They're a very new, newly um, categorized group of catfish, even though every time you flip a log... So, by the way... Oh, they're going too fast, too. Every time you flip a log in the Amazon, I think they're under it. Oh, lights out. Enough of that tank. That's what happened to you guys. Sorry. You guys got cut off. You got cut off. Cut off and out. So we'll say hi to the last tank, and then we're going to wrap this thing up. I want to thank you all for joining me on the third anniversary. You guys, you guys paying attention to me? Yeah. No, nope, you're not. Um, on the third anniversary of the Seeker Rit history, this is a low-tech tank with low-tech lights, no substrate other than gravel, no root tabs in it at the moment. 
and we've got purling coming from plants. You see that? We've got bubbles coming up from plants. Isn't that magical? That's what happens when you've got a happy, healthy ecosystem, even though it looks like there's a bunch of algae and just java moss and bulbitis growing everywhere and, you know. Oh, here's exactly what I was talking about. No, Sergio, you stay away from my hand. I know what happens when you think I have food. You come up and bite me. Uh, this is one of the little pine cone things. This is a nymphaea uh, minutia. That's what it's called. Nymphaea minutia uh, root bulb. And this has grown. It then died and then went into this form. And now it is floating down the... Oh, I don't know, the Congo River, probably, the Nile River, and is waiting to get lodged, dried out, and then uh, washed back out to shore. And then it will have seeds in it. So that's the little seed pod kind of thing. Not seeds, really. It's actually like cells that will then regrow uh, into a new tuber. Um, let's see here. Do I have a nine... Do I have 9,000 in the 10-gallon? Do you have... 9,000 in the 10 gallon. Uh, are you just saying 9,000 fish? At a $1 each, I can't afford 9,000. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can somebody tell me how to treat my African cichlids who have black specks on them? Well, are they a kind of uh, African cichlid that's supposed to have black specks? I take it not. That sounds like a parasite or possibly a fungus. I would treat that as a fungus first or bacteria. So I would use erythromicron. Ooh, look at the cribs. They're doing a show for you. The two males are fighting. He's winning. Um, and Sergio's just dumb, dumb wants food. Um, so basically, I would treat them with uh, ICX, which will take care of the exterior... Um, little black things they'll take care of exterior infections somewhat like ick like um I, I don't know various forms of things uh and boy he's a good looking guy uh and then i would use erythromycron uh erythrom or erythromycin don't use erythromycron those are those teeny fish we were looking at downstairs erythromycin you want to use erythromycin um, and, uh, <laughs> that will help with any bacterial infection if it is bacterial. And then, um, you know, I would also treat them with, so you got the ICX, the erythromycin, and then, um, maybe I, I would do like an antifungal, although the, the Victoria green or, or whatever it is, um, there's a few different green dyes that, that do the same thing. Uh, should take care of the exterior. So I'd do that, and then I'd do a de... Uh, if, if they look sunken belly, you could do a deworming on them, uh, or like a general cure. The, the, the threesome that a lot of people recommend is general cure, erythromycin, and, um, and uh, ICX. That's what, like, Aquarium Co-op and Dean um, Tweedale, who's... Uh, a master fish breeder. By the way, guys, I am a master fish breeder too. I just haven't really mentioned it. Um, but I got the points in finally from two years ago when I recorded them. Uh, and the guy who records for our club is like, hey, you need to submit pictures of all of the um, fish you've grown. And I was like, how about a video documentation? Oh, here's a blue tetra right up here that's full grown. It's the biggest they'll ever get. And it's not going to look blue because of this crappy live stream uh, light. Well, there you go. It does look kind of a cornflower blue. But it looks way more blue to my eye. So it's about the size of... It's not nearly as big as the black neon tetra. It's about the size... It's about 30% bigger than an amber tetra. So if you know how big those are, that would help. Uh, Sergio, I get it. You want food, don't you, buddy? All right, let's 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 end the evening. Um, let's see here. Ah, Jeremy Morell. There's a common external parasite that causes black spots in wild fish. 
It needs birds to host and complete its life cycle, though, so it's not a major issue. See, I did not know that specifically. I did. I have heard of things similar to that uh, with the multi-animal thing. You know, toxoplasmosis is one that's very similar to that that way with multiple animal hosts needed. Um, and if that's the case, then maybe you don't need to treat it. But I, I'd have to see it and confirm what it is, know what fish it's on. Different fish show things different ways. Look at Sergio. Who wants to give Sergio a dollar to to eat? Anybody want to sponsor Sergio to eat? Oh, no, not quite yet, Sergio. Huh? 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 Oh, oh. Sponsor a fish today and help my fish who have been attending their school religiously help them pay for college and get a swarm going. All right. Okay, Sergio. You're okay. I'm going to give you food anyways. I'm not going to blackmail my viewers into giving you food. Boy, that would be evil, though, if, I, if, if you know, like... Uh, DIY, uh, the king of DIY, you know, if Joey was, uh, <laughs> got everyone all obsessed with, like, Frank or, you know, well, rest in peace, but with any of his given fish, uh, got everyone all attached and then, like, wouldn't feed them unless people gave him money, boy, that'd be wicked. New plan for next fiscal year. All right, guys, um... You are a master Tanganyikan Shelly breeder. Right on, Aqua Balls. I like Tanganyikan Shellys. I, I, I like Shellys in general. They're pretty cute. I know there's not like a ton of Shellys, but... Mark got 20 Opie for 10 gallon two. He set up an amazing rock pile and grew tons of algae for them. Right on. That is... That's pretty cool. Um... Well, happy third anniversary. That's right, you guys. Um, and thank you for joining me. Sergio, Sergio thanks you also because he's eating right now. Big dum-dum. Uh, his eyes are not red today. They're orange. That's kind of an odd little thing to note. But uh, usually they're blood red. Maybe he's just not excited enough. So far, seven different species of Shelleys. Yeah. I don't know. I'm getting into the near Lamper Logus, you know. Maybe some Geophagus Earth Eaters, too. I don't know. Cichlids are growing on me. Uh, but I do have a thing. If I have cichlids, what I like about them is what they do with their babies. Um, because it's just so charming to watch, like, cribs or epistos or rams, how they treat their babies. Um, really, really touching. Um, I love it. So, all right, guys, um, if you haven't hit that like button, hit it on the way out and uh, say goodbye to the cribs, too. Look, the males are even coloring up pink and purple for you. And that's because this crib does not exist in the wild. Um, this is a Pulcher and Tiniatus, uh, Lucunja Lower Falls Tiniatus hybrid. Of course, I'm not going to fly back to Africa and let them go. So all you purists that don't like hybrids chill they're just staying in my tank i'm on my third generation it just means that instead of having these teeny tiny otis colorful uh fish instead of the the banded pulcher uh cribs i've got five inch long super colorful variations uh of the other cribs i can do it the other way and get banded mini uh pulchers by having a female Tiniatus. Oh, and we've got the Leopard Plecos making their getaway into the back of the tank. They're meat eaters, so they don't want anything to do with algae wafers. I'll get them their, their blood worms later. Um, all right, guys. Say goodbye to the barbs. Say goodbye to the cribs. Look at how beautiful they are, even as they get up to their four or five inch size. She's not spawning color, but... She is. She's all purdy. And the males will match that color. See how he's not really colored up right now? This male down here is starting to color up. He's going to try to spawn with her. On that note, we better turn the camera off so they can get to it. Say goodbye to Sergio, who's still eating like a piggy-o. Right? And uh, 
Jane says, have a good night. If you get that reference, uh, be real proud of yourself and say goodbye to Sergio. <sighs> Feel naked without it. All right, guys, have a great weekend. If I don't talk to you or see you in the videos, go on and check out the videos of my Milky Way cats that I just put up or of the new baby uh, plecos that spawn. All right, take care of your critters, your organisms, your fish, all the things we talked about tonight and went over. Please take care of those things. And then take care of yourself. For the love of Pete, take care of yourself so you can do those first two. If half of us do those things, uh, I think we're going to have a great world. So thanks again for the super chats. Thanks again for sharing your night with me. God bless you, wife, for sneezing. And uh, I will talk to you all. L letter L number eight letter R later. Sergio just slammed himself into the glass. On that note, good night.